Hi, I'm Sandy from the Isle of History Vid YouTube channel and also Vintage Stitches Historical Network, which you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. When I'm feeling well, I reenact with my family. We do 1940s, 1950s Korea. I dress up in costumes like um, this one <laughs> that I make myself. I just love the historical fashions. Um, but everything has to be adapted to the fact I've got fibromyalgia and so my movements and capabilities can be limited. I made a comment on Instagram a few weeks ago that I'd love to see sewing be done in, with historical um, examples and it got a lot of likes. So therefore I'm trying to do um, each week in long line with sewing be um, a historical example of what they've done. Week two of season eight saw um, making a sports jacket for your sporting hero. And obviously from a historical point of view, that's quite tricky. But from somebody whose idea of sports is um, limited, let's say, um, it was also quite a tricky one to look at. So I decided to look at my actual hero, who is um, Richard Neville, the Earl of Warwick, known as the Kingmaker. And this a sports jacket in those sort of days would be um, an archery, uh, not an archery, sorry, a military tabard. Despite living in Worcestershire, I can actually walk into Warwickshire very, very easily because it's literally at the top of my road. And I lived in Warwickshire for a long time. So Warwickshire is where I sort of think of as being home. Um, I lived in Coventry for over 20 years and that's very much Warwickshire. Um, Warwick Castle, I've loved since I was a child. and I've been obsessed with the Kingmaker um, since I was about 10, 11 years old and the War of the Roses. And it's got worse now I've got older and got more time to read and the internet and all those things available to me. Very lucky where I live in that Warwick Castle is only about 15, 20 minutes up the road. And we're also on the doorstep of Coton Court and all the um, Throckmorton plot lands and all those people, as well as being so near to Worcester. I can also pick up all the Worcester history as well. So it's a lovely, lovely place to live. So Richard Neville inherited Warwick Castle when he married into the, into the family that owned it and he became Earl of Warwick. Um, he's known as the Kingmaker because of the huge role he played in the War of the Roses, enabling either side to um, claim victory and claim power. And it was said that he probably had as much power, if not more power, than the kings at the time. His standard bore the bear and the ragged staff. Um, the ragged staff and bear is still the symbol for Warwickshire County Council or District Council, I can't remember which one. And it's very much associated with Warwick and it's something you see everywhere around here, if I'm honest, it's on everything, people's letterheads and signposts and everything. Um, whilst I can tell you the War of the Roses history and the parts of the Kingmaker plays in it uh, in quite detail, um, I know very little about armour, very little about um, heraldry, and very little about how the clothing was put together in those days. So I'm taking my inspiration from these photos, which I found online, which were of the Kingmaker exhibition at Warwick Castle. It shows various um, classes of um, soldier, well, servant, I'm not sure which, the household, um, wearing these red garments, which have got the ragged staff on the back. So using that as the inspiration, probably the only source of knowledge I've got on it at the moment, I've sketched out some designs based on um, based on the, the jackets and my son can wear them, possibly when we get into medieval reenacted later this year. Um, my first thing was to sketch out the pattern. Um, it looked very much like it was just like an A-line open tunic and the examples I could find online were very much the same. So um, A-line tunics belted in at the waist and then short sleeves, which would come to a puff. I'm assuming short sleeves because long ones would get caught up in whatever they were carrying, wearing, fighting with. Um, again, not my area at all. Um, and I also noticed from the pictures, some had got a silver, shiny, nice fabrics used. And some, especially in the picture with the, the horse and cart, they were very poor, basic um sort of white trimmings rather than civil for that kind of thing whether that's a fact i'm not sure i haven't looked into that i'm literally taking it from the kingmaker exhibition and assuming warwick castle have done the research i may be wildly wrong because this project was a bit of a spur of the moment thing i also wanted to make it sustainable in that i use fabric that's also already scrapped and i'm using this red dress that i made which doesn't fit properly um and it's horrendously bright and red and unflattering and I was never ever going to wear it again so I thought I'd scrap this red fabric and use it and make it make uh, use it to make something nice 
So the first thing I did was take away the sleeves, um, unpick that, and then basically cut it up the front. Um, the sleeves I was going to use again, obviously, and by cutting it up the front, it meant I'd already got the opening for the jacket. Measured across the chest, so I'd got it big enough for my son's sort of upper body, and then flared it out to an A-line, which was pretty much... I didn't have to re-sew the side seams, put it that way. Um, measurements are showing on the, on the tape measures I go around there. I cut nice deep armholes because that was one of the problems with the dress, it was too narrow and um, made sure it had a nice um, drape at the side. For the neck, I cut into the neck a bit as well, um, making it wide enough to go across my, shoulder, my son's shoulders and sort of deep enough to give it, um, again, a good fit, but it would also be covered by the cowl um, when it's being worn. Again, measurements are shown on the screen right now. So about, about three and a half centimetres, uh, inches deep. Um, I then just hacked at it with a pair of scissors, cut the seams of the, the sleeves and laid the sleeves out until, so I could do a rough shape like I'd drawn on the pattern earlier. For the buttons, I plan to recut the buttonholes and make buttons by um, using the fabric, but I actually ended up replacing it with silver ones. And I'd also um, sewn a motif for the bear, started to anyway, to put onto the back, and then I realised the soldiers wouldn't have had the bear, they just would have had the staff. Um, and so I scrapped that and then basically started to sew it up. The trimming, um, I used white fabric and cut the red fabric into a scallop shape. I thought that would be easier than trying to sew it a different way. Um, and basically, just, I just used red wool and, and sewed it on. Um, trying to sew it on as neatly as possible, just using running stitches and folding it over where I can. There's no hemming on it. Um, and so that is the trim. I tried it on the reluctant teenager and um, I needed to cut loads off. So this is it after I've shortened it um, and after I've made the buttonholes, you can see on the right hand side, or his, sorry, his left hand side. Um, I was going to, I folded the row of eyelets underneath to be able to sew the buttons on and tried to mark the back um, in centre and then added that to the bottom and to the sleeves, tidied it all up, blanket stitched the um, you know the rolled eyelets over around the back so you can't see it when you when you got it on and sewed the buttons on top to it and then as you can see i actually went with plain silver buttons probably not historically accurate not entirely sure and put the ragged staff over the heart um as the soldiers and, and staff would have at the time i then finished it off with a giant ragged staff um appliqued on top of it which is pointing the wrong way and not entirely sentinel so um if we do ever wear it out it won't be anywhere where the details matter let's put it that way um as you can see my boy loves it and he loves modeling it anyway so i suspect it will hang up somewhere um and maybe go out with us as a, a prop somewhere really actually enjoyed making it and the bit of research i had to do it didn't take too long to actually remodel the dress but um it was worth it just for having to read up about kingmaker again um if you don't know about him look him up research him he was absolutely instrumental um but gets a bit of a bad press because basically he jumped sides and the minute mattered um and so and if you haven't visited white castle also do that but it's run by merlin entertainments now so it's it's not what it used to be um if you don't follow me already please do um either on on the youtube subscribe for that for more videos which will just be randomly related to history or maybe sewing or maybe not um and my etsy shop and facebook and instagram i update whenever i can but it's all worked around and illness which you'll see on other videos um i'm trying to balance a bit of everything at the moment hope you enjoyed that give it a go um it's a fairly straightforward thing to do and if you pause the video along you'll see where i've drafted the pattern out and if i can help just drop me a message say how did you draft the pattern and i'll tell you <laughs> cheers thank you for watching